As we continue our AI Jumpstart series, we're going to use the concepts we introduced in part one for a really thorough introduction to ChatGPT in this part. If you haven't watched that first part, do so before watching this one. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe on YouTube and at the streamline.ai so you can make the most of AI and automation. The release of ChatGPT in November 2022 really ignited a revolution in artificial intelligence. Not only did it offer unrivaled capability, but it was also profoundly accessible and usable. As a free web-based conversational chatbot, it placed an unimaginably powerful technology in the hands of everyday people. And it was and it remains just a mere preview of the disruptive force that it would become along with the many applications of AI that it would inspire. Before diving into ChatGPT, let's take a look at the company behind it. OpenAI is an AI research and deployment company with a mission to ensure that artificial general intelligence benefits all of humanity. It engineers advanced deep learning models for processing and generating language and imagery. The company began as a nonprofit in 2015 with Elon Musk among its co founders. But in 2019, in order to attract funding, it transitioned to a capped for profit company where its profits would be limited to 100 times its investments. And that's when Sam Altman became CEO and Microsoft made its first billion dollar investment in the company, to which it would add 10 billion in January of 2023. So within that new profit model, OpenAI began commercially licensing its technologies. GPT is a family of large language models from OpenAI that debuted in 2018, and it's named for three characteristics that we covered in part one. The first is generative. Not only do the models interpret language, they generate it. They're pre-trained. The models receive unsupervised training with billions of pages from the web, and digitized books. And in many final applications, they're fine-tuned through supervised and reinforcement learning with specialized data. And then their transformer architecture elevates their accuracy and efficiency by removing, rearranging, and assigning weights to words. So initially, GPT models were accessible only via OpenAI's API. And an API or an application programming interface allows apps to integrate with other apps. Virtually all of your apps use APIs. And in the case of GPTs, third-party apps can communicate with and fine-tune the models. So that allows developers to create interfaces for the models or visual mediums for interacting with them. And when you see variations of powered by GPT technology, it's accomplishing that using the OpenAI API. One notable example is Jasper, which generates copywriting for brands and the assortment of apps tapping into GPTs using the OpenAI API is growing by the day. And then in November, 2022, the release of ChatGPT gave everyday users a more direct connection to GPTs. Rather than accessing concentrated derivatives of the models through third-party apps, they could go straight to an open AI chatbot, and that vastly expanded access to the capabilities of the large language models while creating a whole new form of pleasure. So in a snapshot, ChatGPT is a conversational AI or chatbot that accepts prompts and returns outputs in natural language. It's not a large language model in itself, but rather it's a medium for interacting with open AI's GPT models. So in other words, ChatGPT is an app that offers a visual interface for GPTs, much like Outlook is an interface or a client for emails that are stored on a server. Some observers call ChatGPT the eyes and ears of language models. And you'll want to stay mindful of this distinction between GPTs, the models, and ChatGPT, which is the chatbot that interfaces with the models. So on top of their expansive pre-training through unsupervised learning, that's with unlabeled data, the models are fine-tuned for ChatGPT through supervised learning with sample prompts and responses, as well as reinforcement learning with human monitors. And among other benefits, this fine-tuning prepares ChatGPT for common prompts and it makes its responses more human-like. 
Initially, ChatGPT relied solely on its training data, which contained no information later than September of 2021, and that was a big limitation. But in May of 2023, it gained access to the live internet using a plugin that integrates with Microsoft's Bing search engine. Now, as I record, that internet connectivity is limited to the web app. You can't use it on the mobile apps for ChatGPT, and it's available to all paying users and rolling out incrementally to those on the free tier. And ChatGPT supports multiple chats. So for each active chat, it recognizes previous prompts and its responses to those prompts so you can build on earlier parts of the conversation. And I mentioned that free tier, but for $20 a month, you can subscribe to ChatGPT+, Plus, which will offer guaranteed uptime, access to newer GPT models, faster responses, and early admission to new features, as well as the plugins that we'll talk about shortly. And as you'll be reminded throughout the onboarding process and as you use ChatGPT, it remains in the beta phase of development, which makes it vulnerable to mistakes from nuanced misinformation to full-fledged hallucinations, which we'll learn about. You can access ChatGPT in two ways. There's the web app on OpenAI's website at chat.openai.com. And then more recently, OpenAI launched the official app for iOS. So users of iPhone and iPad will find it in their app store. And by the time you watch this, there very well may be an Android app available as well. I did a walkthrough of the iOS app in another video on my YouTube channel. So to sign in, you'll need an OpenAI account, which you can create for free using an email address or by linking an existing account with Apple, Google, or Microsoft. And when you sign in for the first time, you'll find the chat interface intuitive with clear options for entering prompts and creating new chats. We'll spend much more time with the immediate and long-term applications of ChatGPT, but for your early experimentation, try having it summarize content or explain a topic. You can have it outline or draft posts for your blog or social media. You can give it a hypothetical scenario and ask it to determine the outcome of that scenario, or you can give it an objective and ask it how to achieve that objective. You can also supply a list of ingredients or dietary restrictions and ask ChatGPT to plan a meal. I'm also going to dive much deeper into strategies for architecting effective prompts or what's known as prompt engineering, but for now, just keep in mind that you can provide ChatGPT with a particular length for the response, such as the number of words. You can ask for a particular tone, like playful, or give it the name of an author. You can specify a target audience, like 10th graders or computer science student. You can even assign the role of the chatbot, such as an interviewer for a particular position or a therapist that specializes in a particular field of psychology. And you can also ask it for a particular format for the output, like a bulleted or a numbered list. Let's quickly look at four prompt types that don't depend on the internet that I use in some fashion almost every single day. The first one's for an introductory explanation of a topic I want to learn about. What I'll do is I'll assign the role of expert to ChatGPT. In this case, we'll use computer scientists. And then I'll tell ChatGPT that I'm a high school student and I'll ask it to teach me how computers work, in this case, in 500 words. And it responds with a 500 word explanation of how computers work written at a level that a high school student can understand. And then one of my most common uses of ChatGPT is to summarize articles and other content. And in another video, I'll explain how I send that content to ChatGPT in just a click. But for this demo, we'll use the chat interface directly. So for my prompt, I asked ChatGPT to summarize the article as a bullet list in fewer than 100 words. And then below the prompt, you can provide the content to summarize. You can see that I've placed article in square brackets, which creates a sort of variable. And then I define the value for that variable. This technique comes in handy with many prompt types. And from our lengthy biography of Tiger Woods, we get a concise bulleted summary. Now, ChatGPT does have some limitations for the volume of content you can provide in your prompt. And in later tutorials, I'll explore some ways of working around those limitations. I also use ChatGPT often to outline or draft content. In this example, we'll assign it the role of dog training blogger. We'll ask it to write a blog post on potty training with a limit of 1,000 words. And we'll tell it the audience is first-time dog owners. 
and then we'll provide five specific topics to cover in the blog post. And we get back a nicely formatted 1000 word blog post with an introduction, a conclusion, and content for each requested subtopic. And then the last one's pretty straightforward, but almost every day I find myself asking ChatGPT to list synonyms of a word. Whether a proponent or a skeptic, pretty much any first time user of ChatGPT describes a sense of magic. Its novelty is undeniable. Its natural conversation, grammatical soundness, and conviction are truly uncanny, and it's not until you start to pick up on some of its factual inaccuracies does this mystique begin to fade. So this sensational first impression caused ChatGPT to spread like a wildfire across news and social media when it was released in November of 2022. In just two months, it reached 100 million active users, which is a stunning contrast with TikTok's nine months and Instagram's 2.5 years to reach the same milestone. When it launched, the big elephant in the room for ChatGPT was that its knowledge expired in September 2021. It relied entirely on that pre-training data, while alternative chatbots from Google and Microsoft would soon offer the ability to search the live web. But in March 2023, OpenAI announced ChatGPT plugins. So like extensions for your web browser, plugins extend the functionality of ChatGPT, typically by connecting it with other apps. So for example, OpenTables plugin allows ChatGPT to make up-to-date restaurant recommendations. And Kayak's plugin allows ChatGPT to offer live pricing for flights, hotels, and more. Hundreds of plugins now give ChatGPT access to real time information from other apps. And that library is growing quickly as OpenAI extends access to developers. But the most notable plugin comes from OpenAI itself rather than a third party developer. It allows ChatGPT to search the live web. And initially, it was referred to generically as Web Browser. But at its 2023 Build Conference, Microsoft announced that Bing would become ChatGPT's default search engine, and the plugin was subsequently renamed Browse with Bing. Now, as I record, plugins are only accessible through the web app version of ChatGPT. You won't find them in the app for iOS, but I'm hoping they'll make their way to iOS soon. And Browse with Bing is rolling out to all users, but third-party plugins require a ChatGPT Plus subscription. After toggling over to the GPT-4 model, those users will see the option to install and selectively enable plugins. ChatGPT's access to the internet and other apps is increasingly essential to its use, and to be sure, I'll continue to cover plugins extensively. Before ChatGPT, developers could build apps that interact with GPT models through OpenAI's API. And with ChatGPT, OpenAI expanded that API to allow third-party apps to interact directly with the chatbot. So every day, new apps are leveraging the capabilities of ChatGPT in really innovative and creative ways. They typically pair ChatGPT with other technologies to expand its capabilities and provide novel solutions to specific needs. Slack's ChatGPT integration is a great example. And the explosion of ChatGPT inspired a flurry of new integrations directly with the GPT models. New chatbots from Expedia and Duolingo closely followed the launch of ChatGPT. And these multitude of apps that are built on ChatGPT or are inspired by it, they're as important to today's AI revolution as ChatGPT itself. We'll explore many of them. If this part of our series was helpful, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe at the streamline.ai.